Hey, hey, good morning. Good morning, people. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Come on, we are in episode number six. Come on, family of the drawing board. Even for our YouTube family, just want to say thank you guys so much for, for tuning in and, and joining in. And as God is speaking through this drawing board, come on, we, we've been going, we've been, we've been in the gym. I, I'm saying that before every episode when we kick it off, because I want to I want to hold all of us accountable. And I really want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for, for carving out an hour to kick off the week on this Monday to, to hear what thus says the Lord. <laughs> uh, being back in the gym, as we're, I, I love even how, and if you guys haven't heard the message yet, I, I definitely want to shout out the, my, my bride, Pastor Brennan. She preached an incredible word yesterday. So when you get some time today, if you have it, please do yourself a favor and go check out the word it was an awesome message. And one of the things what I love what she said in the message, she talked about being in alignment, being in alignment with God. Here's what that does. Even for what we're talking about here, here's what spiritual discipline is all about. It's about making sure that we are in alignment with God. When we are in alignment with God, we get to hear from God. We get to see the activity. But, but even for these three premises that we've been speaking about for the last five weeks, in this season, please hear my heart. This is what I've been praying. This is what you've been praying. This is what we believe in. In this season, we are doing this, family. We are, we're getting stronger, we're getting better, and we're drawing closer to God. When we are in alignment, those three things are always happening in our life. In this season of our life, we want to be so in alignment because we're going on a journey. We're going on a walk with Jesus Christ and being in alignment with him. It flows through him to us and we're able to be in alignment to the purpose that he has called us to. I love this quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I, I love this quote. It says, if you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful, but recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's a new definition of greatness. By giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great because everybody can serve. So, so for the next few minutes, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm beginning with that quote, we're going to be talking about serving. We're going through these different spiritual disciplines, or even as we were saying, these spiritual exercise, these exercise today, serving is one of them. Being in alignment with God means that God has called all of us to serve. He's called all of us to actually live a life of servanthood before him. Not only do we serve God, but we serve our community, our neighbors. We are, we're a call to this, this, all, this, this, it's not about titles. We are called from the generous of our heart that's entrusted by God to actually live our life a service. How are you serving today? If I, if I can say it for those three premises, when we serve, we become stronger. When we serve, we draw closer to God. When we serve, we get better. If you're looking to get better in this season, season serve. If you're, if you're praying about a next door that's getting ready to happen in your life, wherever God is taking you, I, I stand on this principle, serve where you are going. Serve where you are at right now, but serve where you are going. Give to where God is taking you. Bless where God is getting ready to take you. Don't look for God to open a door if you're not willing to serve in that season already. This is why this is what ser service leads us in a flow of where God is getting ready to take you. Service should be ingrained into our hearts. But I love the quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. because he said, if you want to be great, serve. Each and every one of us that's on this call right now, and even for our YouTube family, you are called by God to be great. That when God spoke you, you are, you are his, his handiwork. I love that scripture. Here's why it says handiwork. Matter of fact, when God spent time to, when he created Adam, he spoke everything else. But when he got to, when he got to man and to human, he actually began to use his hands to create something. Just that he got down into the details of your life. 
This is our creator that I'm talking about. This is why you're called to do greatness. Why? Because you're so great that God actually had to use his hands. His mouth wasn't even enough. He wanted to draw so close to your identity of who you are and use his hands to create to, to create you. You are the apple of God's eye. So walk in that greatness today. Walk in that purpose today. How do we do that, Pastor Ant? We do it by serving. If you want to be great, serve. Matter of fact, if I can use some red, some red words for you right in, in the gospel, come on, those are the important words. Uh, Matthew 23, 11, Jesus says it this way, family. He says, the greatest among you will be your servant. Now, now, these are the words coming out of the mouth of Jesus. Jesus is saying that in order to live a life, we have to live a life of servants. So, so to kick this off, when, when I was studying earlier this week, the questions that should come from, from a servant should always be this. Do I live to, to be served or to serve? Am I someone who searches for opportunities to bless others? How often do I serve? Can I say it this way? Why do I serve? Do I help others because it's right or because I want recognition? Come on. See, see, serving is an outward expression of an inward conviction. That when God begins to do something in your heart, convicting in your heart, that's a good word. It's not a bad word. That's what the Holy Spirit is here to do, is here to convict us. Or can I say it this way, even breaking it down a little bit? He's here to convince us of what we should be doing, that we are called to, to glorify God. This is the purpose that each and every one of us have on this, on this call right now. We have been created to glorify God, we do that by serving him and serving others. If you want to bring glory to God's name, serve somebody today. We are called to be great. In order to be great, you have to actually serve someone. See, see what, what I love about this is as we get ready to lean in a little bit, because Jesus is the greatest example. If, if, if we need any example about servanthood, Let's go to Jesus. Matter of fact, I love studying in the scriptures, even when we, when we go into the Last Supper. Come on, family. Even at the, at the dining room table, this is Jesus right now. He's, 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 he's leading up to his death. He's beginning to even share more with his family, his disciples of, of this journey that God has him on, his father has him on. And Jesus, even, even at a time when Jesus getting ready to take his last meal, Jesus served. And instead of filling himself up, he poured out to somebody else. Instead of feeding his belly, Jesus decided to lean in and serve somebody else. This is the beauty, oh my gosh, this is the beauty of our Savior's heart that he's always looking to serve. Matter of fact, he said, I, I, I didn't come to condemn the world, but I come to save the world. I, I, I come not to, to be served, but I come to serve. He's always looking to, for who can he serve? As a matter of fact, even at the, at, 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 at the Last Supper, Jesus decided to actually wash his disciples' feet. Now, come on, family, we're, we're talking about feet here now. Come on, that's, <laughs> I, is, they don't have Jordan sneakers <laughs> to walk around with. They don't have expensive boots <laughs> to walk around. They're walking around with sandals. I, 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 want, I want you to get this imagery in your head, seven o'clock in the morning. They're walking around in sandals. Jesus decides to lower himself and begin to wash his disciples' feet. We're talking about feet. He begins to take their sandals off. This is, matter of fact, Peter, I love the conversation. You can find it in, in, in John. I love this interaction between Jesus and, and Peter because Peter is saying, hey, you don't have to wash my feet, master. No, no, matter of fact, let, let me wash your feet. And, and Jesus is insisting, no, I lead because I'm the greatest servant. I'm teaching you something here, Peter. 
Matter of fact, you you have none of me. You're you're not part of me if you don't even allow me to wash your feet. Here's the significance of that, that Jesus himself will lower himself down to, to the place of the messiness. This is how I see it in my head as the imagery, the feet. Matter of fact, Jesus got vulnerable with Peter. He even lowered himself down into the messiness of serving. As a servant, are you willing to lower yourself down into the messiness of what it called to be a servant? Matter of fact, if I can say it this way, even Peter himself, Peter had to become vulnerable. He had to show them toes. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Peter had to show them feet. And, and, and he, had to, he had to be vulnerable with Jesus. And Jesus, see, here's what servanthood is all wrapped in. It's wrapped in being vulnerable before the people that you're serving. Are you willing to lower your heart? Are you willing to lower yourself down to serve the people that he has called you to? So I said in here that servanthood is messy. See, servanthood is not about recognition. Servanthood is not about accolades. Servanthood is actually, how can I make somebody else better in this season? Who's in my life right now that I can serve, that I can actually make better? Not, not, not better from my words, but better from serving. See, see, not better from my wisdom, but better just from serving. I'm not looking to make myself better. I'm looking to make you better because I want to serve you. We all have been called and created to release something that was poured into us that God is pouring out to somebody else. This is Jesus at Last Supper. Here's the beautiful thing. Even in that context, here's what I love about that not only did he wash the disciples' feet, but even at the dining room table, even when we look at when they're taking the Last Supper, I even go a little bit, I, this is why I love the scriptures, I go a little bit even closer, even from the seating arrangement at the dining room table, Jesus was still serving. I know, I know we have, I know we had a Lin, uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, uh, um, painting, but it's actually, to be honest, actually kind of an inaccurate painting because it's, matter of fact, if you study the culture, it wouldn't have been kind of like, a, a, a road, a long table, like the tables behind us, more likely it would have been kind of like in a U shape or maybe an N shape, depending on which side of the table that you're on. But even down to the custom of this last meal, Jesus was even serving. Matter of fact, just to kind of give a little bit of context of this, this moment, what I, this is what I love about this moment, is that, that this is the Passover meal that Jesus actually sends them ahead. He tells them to go prepare Jesus is the host of this night. Matter of fact, even in the home, they will go upstairs in a chamber and there's the table. Matter of fact, when they sit at the table, more likely it's not like in a chair, they're actually on, 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 sitting on the ground. And like I say, even in a U shape or N shape and down to the seating arrangement. I want you guys to catch this. Down to the seating arrangement, Jesus is even serving. As a matter of fact, if Whoever's the host of the table will sit in a particular, particular spot. Whoever's to the, to the right normally is, a, from custom, is a trusted friend. From, from, from correct studying of the scriptures, scholars believe that this person was actually John. We, we understand John. John. John lets us know that he was a trusted friend, beloved John. You, stu you study scriptures, John throws in like subliminals throughout the whole text, letting people know. I was close to Jesus. He's he, he just letting you know. But to the left, catch this, to the left, through the study in the scriptures, this is actually the, the, the guest of honor seat. This is whoever the, the guest is, they will actually give this seat to, to a special individual. You study the scriptures correctly, but from correct in, in, interpretation, we believe that the person that was sitting in this seat was actually Judas. That, that Judas himself, whether we don't know, so I, I, don't, I don't like to add to the text. We don't know if, if Jesus actually proclaimed and said, hey, Judas, I want you to sit in the seat. Or oh, maybe Judas just being Judas. Judas said, no, nah, I'm going to, he called shotgun. <laughs> I'm going to go sit in that seat. But regardless of, of if it, the, the seat was pro, uh, proclaimed to him or he just took it over, Judas was sitting in a seat as the guest of honor 
that he was getting ready to portray Jesus and Jesus knew it. Even when we study the scriptures, matter of fact, we, we, we can see this because Jesus, before he, he broke bread and after all that, they took communion and, and he, he, began, he turns to, to Judas and he took the sop and he actually fed Judas. That lets us know that Judas was sitting to his left. In a moment of Jesus knowing that Judas was getting ready to betray him, my gosh, Jesus was still serving him. He still turned his food over and fed him first. In a moment where Jesus knows, I know that you're getting ready to betray. Matter of fact, he whispered in the man's ear. He said, hey, what you're getting ready to do? I need you to go do it quick. And he was feeding him despite knowing what was getting ready to come. Can we speak to the heart of true servanthood? True servanthood is not, a not, it's not about serving an individual or a season or, or an occupation or whatever it could be. True servanthood is not about the results. It's all about what has God called you to do in that season. Can you serve in a discomfort? Can you serve in pain? Can you serve and betray you? Can, can you serve when you don't get the results that you think that you should be getting? This is when God is, this is that consuming fire where it begins to burn everything off, off of you because Jesus is teaching us here. Even at the dining room table, Jesus is teaching us a lesson here. Matter of fact, we, we, we get this whole quote from Jesus when he says the greatest among you. Here's the powerfulness of this. The reason why Jesus was answering that because there was actually a dispute at the table. Come on, any, any families can, 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 can agree with that. There was some dispute at the dining room table. Here's why there was a dispute at the dining room table because the, the disciples were asking a question. Who is the greatest? Who is the greatest among us? The reason why they was probably asking that question, we studied it correctly because there was an individual sitting in a seat that the host will actually proclaim that it's somebody supposed to sit in. So now they all, they're probably whispering to one another, why is Judas sitting in that seat? Did, did, did master give that seat over? Now they're, they're whispering around the table because they have a, they have a mentality of if, if a king is getting ready to die, who's the great successor? If a leader is getting ready to pass on, who does the baton go to? It goes to whoever's next in line, the, the greatest one. And they're, they're having conversation. And Jesus says this, the one that's least among us will be the one that's greatest among us. Watch this. If we study the scriptures correctly, actually, we, we believe that Peter was sitting across from Jesus. So matter of fact, Peter is sitting across from Jesus. Peter's at the end of the table. Normally, tradition-wise, normally the one that's sitting at the end of the table in that position is normally, one, is normally the one that's least among the people that's in that party. The reason that seat is left is left for the servant so that, per, that, per, that person can have room to get up and serve individuals. Go get the door, go get the food so they can actually serve. So they, they actually make that seat available for the servant so that the other people around don't have to get up. Jesus is teaching them in this moment. It's probably going over their head. That Jesus saying the one that's reclining at the table is not the greatest. The one that's actually up serving is the one that's greatest. Peter, I mean, Jesus letting them know that Peter, the one that Jesus said upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. It's probably going over their head. But Jesus said the one that you think that's least right now, come on, somebody. It's the one that's getting ready to serve my church. It's the one that's getting ready to pour into my church. It's the one that has something that I'm giving them to that's planted on something tremendous in this season. This is what servanthood is all about. While you are arguing about who's the greatest, Jesus looking at the one that's serving. Can you serve when recognition go over your head? Can you serve in a dark season when no one sees you? Can you serve when, when, when no one knows exactly what you're doing in that season behind the curtain? Or, or do we need recognition in order to serve? <laughs> this, is what, this is what Jesus is talking about. 
that in a season when no one sees you, can you still pour your heart out as if you're in front of thousands? Because what's done in a private will always come to the light. Jesus is talking about their heart in this season. I love it that it says in Mark 20, 28, it says this, just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve, our purpose for being saved is to serve in a similar fashion. We are not created to be served. We are created to serve. See, our purpose is to glorify God. We do, we do that through serving him and serving others. I, w- I want you to catch this quote. I wrote this down. You can write it down too. The more we lose ourselves in serving, the more we discover the beauty that God has placed inside of us. Let me say that one more time. The more we lose ourselves in serving, the more we will actually discover the beauty that God has placed inside of us. When we serve, it begins to release the hidden places that's inside of us. The beauty, is, this is why this is an important part of our spiritual um, discipleship and disciplines. Because actually, all of the other disciplines, and there's many more we didn't touch on all of them, pretty much all of those are inward expressions. Here's what serving Hood is all about, and it, it comes down to being in alignment with humility because it's an inward conviction, but it's an outward expression. What goes, in, what, what goes on inside will always show up on the outside. So how we serve and serve others is a reflection of our heart on the inside, or it's a reflection of the beauty of our heart in the inside. When we pour out, it shows us that, hey, you know what? Our heart is in the right place. See, that's the beauty. See, I wrote wrote this down about service. Watch this. Number one, service breaks the yoke of entitlement. Service breaks the yoke of entitlement. I love that service does not have a title. It doesn't matter what your title is. Matter of fact, Jesus was the greatest. Jesus was their master, their rabbi. Jesus, we're talking about our savior. Jesus was teaching them, if I'm going to be the greatest, the greatest has to be the ser- serpent. It has to be the servant. The greatest has to be the shepherd. If I'm the one, the greatest, he said, I lead by example. It's not about hierarchy. It's not about title. It's not about entitlement. Matter of fact, if I can say it like this, I love this book too. If I can give a a book um, recommendation, excuse me, recommendation. I love the book called Leaders Eat Last. Right there, I forgot the author. Uh, Someone could probably put the author in. Leaders Eat Last. Here's what that means. It means that we live a life of holding back what I can eat in this season so that others can eat. That's the mindset of a great leader. That I'm always looking to eat last. I'm always looking for others to go first. Jesus, this is why Jesus said the last shall be first because we have a heart to make sure others go forward and go first. But in order to to, to lead at that type of level, you have to strip off your titles. You have to throw away all of those uh, letters before your name and after your name. It doesn't matter what your title is. We're all called to be great. Why? Because we're all called to serve. The greatest will always serve, but also number two, service disrupts the pattern of ungratefulness. The more we lean into serving, it actually um, interrupts the, the pattern of thinking of being ungrateful. Because the more we pour out into this world, we, uh, we see that we have more than we actually supposed to have. This is why this is why serving has to be a posture of our heart because it keeps us so humble. It keeps us so grounded and rooted in the things of God. Matter of fact, if I can say it this way, number three, service heals the wounds of insatiable. In other words, it heals the wounds of never being satisfied. You ever been in a season of your life, you just feel as though that you just, you're just, you're just not satisfied. That's, that's not good enough. The more we pour out, 
We understand that Jesus is the only one that can quench our thirst and that can quench our hunger. Only Jesus. So this is why spiritual contentment is only found in him and not other people. This is why we, we, we stay connected to him because we can go running on serving other things or doing other things, but we can only find our quench and our purpose that's connected to him. This is why service through him is so important. Not only it keeps the ungratefulness away, but it, it satisfies us being connected to him. And it heals the wounds of just never being satisfied. Spiritual contentment is a, is a great thing. Here's how we find spiritual contentment. Go serve. Go serve. Serve in this season. If I can say it this way for, for number four, service humbles you. It reminds you where God has brought you from. Just like I said, service keeps you rooted and keeps you grounded. When we pour out, we are reminded, my, 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 God, you have brought me a mighty long way. It reminds us, it plays that track record in our head. We can see our journey with God. This is why we, we pour out because not only service is, is, is a benefit for others, but like I said before, the more we serve, we understand that service was actually for my heart, it was actually for my mind, it was actually for myself. If you want to grow stronger and closer and better in this season to make yourself better, serve. Serve in this season. If I can, if I can say this for this last point, I just kind of tap, tap, tap on it. Service makes others better. Who can you make better in this season? What can you make better in this season? What is out there that God is calling you to go serve because God has placed something inside of you so that you can actually go release it and reveal it to the very thing that's waiting on for you to actually serve in this season? I wrote this down in my notes. After you have prayed, worship, read the Bible, fasted, come on, how will you serve others or can I say it this way? How will others be blessed by the strength you never give away? So we, read, we can read our Bible. We can, we can fast. We can worship. And we can pray. And God begins to pour inside of us. How can others be blessed if we never give our love away? If we never give our strength away? If we never give our hope away, how, how can others, how can our families, our coworkers, our neighbors, how can others be, 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 ha, come in contact with the light that has, the lights that has been shown and, and, and shown on us and being revealed through us? How can they come in contact if we never release the very thing that God has given us? Let us not grow let us not grow stingy with the things that God has given us, but a hand, a posture that is always open. And let us not live a life with closed fists that this belongs to me and this is mine, but rather a life with open palms and understanding the more I do this, the more that God does this. The more that I release this, the more that God pours in here. If we can live a life with our palms wide open, God is saying when your palms are wide open, when your heart is wide open, when your mind is wide open, I will continue to pour into. I can only pour into a heart that's open. I can only pour into a mind that's open. I can only pour into a, 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 a palms that's open. Let us live a life and make sure that we're giving it away because when we give it away, God will always refill it. He will always refill it. I, I wrote this in my notes and I'm, I'm challenging myself even this, um, even this week. Give joy in this season. Give love in this season. Give strength in this season. Give peace in this season. Give patience in this season. Give time in this season. Have boundaries. Let me say that. But don't lean away from giving time just because you have boundaries. Be very wise with that. Why? Because if we're called to, to, to be the light upon this world, not to live a life of being stingy, 
have our boundary that we, we, we'll probably do a, a great teaching probably sometime on, on with the drawing board around boundaries because that's something that's close to my heart and I really want I want to unpack it a little bit more but but allow the Holy Spirit to lead you with that because we can't be too stingy with our time because if we be stingy with our time we're not able to release the very thing that somebody else needs and God is calling them to, to, to greatness and God has called us to come alongside of the thing or the person or, or the occupation or whatever it may be and serve so that it can become the full image. I even wrote it, I wrote these three, give time, give talent, but also give treasure. Let's, let's be in a posture of releasing that. What are you giving away so others can be refreshed? I want to close it out. I want to close it out with that scripture right there. I love Proverbs 11, 25. It says, a generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. If you're looking to be refreshed in this season of your life, go refresh somebody else. I, I, I love this scripture. I'm always reminded of Proverbs eleven twenty five. I, I try to hold that dear to my heart when I, when I go through a valley and I'm drained and I'm weary and, and, and I, don't have, I don't have clarity of what's, of what's going on or in a season of trying to push through it and I just feel as though, God, I need to be refreshed. Here's what God always challenges me in my heart. Go refresh somebody else. Here's why it is a principle that's found throughout the Bible. We can, matter of fact, we can go back to Genesis. Genesis is the beginning. That's what I love about Genesis because in the book of Genesis, that's when we can study themes and principles and, and begin to catch the heart of God that flows throughout scripture. So even with the Abrahamic covenant is that, hey, I will bless you and you will bless others. In other words, it is a cycle that's starting from God. And God has said, when I bless you, now you're going to go bless others. In order to keep the principle moving, or this way, in order to keep the cycle moving, we have to make sure we stay in the cycle. We have to make sure that we are actually staying true to, to the principle that has been laid down for us. This is not a, a self-help principle. No, no, no. I love those great self-help books, but it's found right here in the Bible. Everything begins right here. The principle begins right here in this Abrahamic covenant of what God is teaching Abraham and his family. But now we get to receive. If you want to be refreshed, go refresh somebody else. Why? Because I'm refreshing you. When I refresh you, you refresh somebody else. And then when you refresh somebody else, I refresh you. It continues to go. If you're looking for your extra strength in this season, go release strength. If you're looking for a financial breakthrough, go bless somebody else. If you're looking for more joy in this season, go release the very thing that you're looking for God to do. Go serve in the area where you're feeling drained. And I'm telling you right now, God will begin to move in your life in that Pacific area because God is looking for you to, can you trust me in a limited season? Can you trust me when you're running low on fuel? Can you trust me? Can you still of understanding that when I'm almost on E, I don't have anything else to give God. And God is saying, can you trust me even on the E to release it? Understanding that I will fulfill it. I am your heavenly father. I am your provider. I am the one that's getting ready to do it. Do not allow your meter of being on E to stop you for what God is getting ready to do in your life. That God is saying, if you will release it and trust me, I am the manifold God. I am the multiplier God. I am the one that can bring things. Matter of fact, they was in the wilderness and God began to send manna. Don't stop from moving forward with the thing that God has called you to serve just because you are in a limited season. God is saying still serve in a limited season. If can you trust me in a small beginning? Can you trust me in a limited capacity? Can you trust me and still serve as though you are living in the abundance and watch I lead you to more? If you're looking for more, serve in the least. Oh my gosh. If you're looking for God to do abundantly above all, stay connected to the vine. 
if you're looking for God to begin to move in your life in a, in a dramatic way, here's what I'm saying. Please hear my heart. I know my passion is kind of up this morning because God is speaking even to my heart. Serve where you need God to move in your life. Serve right there. Pour out right there. Pour your heart right where you need your breakthrough at. Right where you're feeling the pain at. Right where the tears are rolling down your eyes in this season of you just don't have enough. God is saying serve in that area. Go serve somebody else uh, where you feel the pain at. Go serve. Never allow a limited, limited season to stop you from serving. That's the beauty. That's the light that God has called us to produce in this season. Do not stop being what you have been created to do. Keep moving forward. Keep moving and pour your heart out. Stay our open vessel in this season. I don't know who, to, who, who who's that for in this season. I, I, I can feel it. Do not stop. Don't close the, don't close the lid. Please keep the lid open and pour out, pour out and watch God pour in. Watch God pour in, in this season of your life. Why? Because you are in alignment. You are in alignment to what God is calling you to be. Do not, do not measure your alignment off of what your natural eyes see. Here's what God is speaking even to myself, even for my journey with, with, with Christ. Do we, we, we have to stop measuring ourselves on the wrong scoreboard. We have to stop measuring ourselves with the wrong measuring stick. That we're, that, that we're taking man-made measurements and trying to measure ourselves to see if we have the fruit. But God is saying that it's in the inside, it's that, that, that God looks at the inside and then he measures the man's or the woman's heart. And here's what I'm saying. If your heart is in the right place, despite what the natural may be, you will still serve. Because your heart will say serve, your heart will say give, your heart will say love, that we are so in a posture to always flow out despite what the natural may say or may look like, my heart says give. Give and keep giving. Why? Because I have a father who has everything that I need. Matter of fact, if I can say it this way, and I'm, I'm going to get ready to close it down, but I'm excited about this. Why? Because we are connected to heaven. Please understand that access has been granted. And when access has been granted to that kingdom, that kingdom that has everything, or you are connected to something that's great, you are a son and a daughter to the father of the kingdom, and he has everything that you need. So this is why we don't stop when we look like as though we're in a limited season. You're never really in a limited season when you're connected to Jehovah Jireh. Come on, somebody. That you have been access is granted. Matter of fact, if I can say it like this, you have fridge rights. Come on. It's for refrigerator. Let me break it down a little bit. I remember back when, even when I was a kid and I went over uh, one of my friend's house and I, I walked into his house and I remember what his father said to me. His father said, hey, Anthony, when you come into Johnny's house, you have fridge rights. Here's what, here's what he was saying. It was, it was different because my father wasn't like that. You ain't just walking in his house and, and, and going and go his fridge right. That ain't going to happen. But I remember, I remember his father said, you got fridge rights. Because you are a friend to my son. Come on, somebody. You have rights to whatever in this house you have rights. Matter of fact, I remember that I remember that's I remember that um uh, remember that day they had all the great the pantry was stocked. They had all of the come on, I'm a 10-year-old, they had all of the great hostries and donuts. I mean, they had they had everything. They they were living good. But he said, You got fridge rights. You have fridge rights. Why? Not because of who you are but because of who you're connected to. <laughs> because you are connected to my son. Whatever is behind me now belongs to you through relationship. Here's what God is saying. God is saying this to you in this season. You have fridge rights to my kingdom. You are connected 
to my son. The Holy Spirit is with you. You are connected. Whatever is behind me, you have fridge rights. So this is why when you have fridge rights, kind of like my kids, <laughs> how they do, because they see everything that's in the stock pantry. They, they just don't eat one. They go, they keep going over and keep going because there's abundance behind them. I got to put some limitations like, hey, slow down. You don't, this, this grocery bill is like a mortgage. Slow down for your father and your mother, really, because she's, she's the one that's doing the shopping. Slow down. But here's the beauty. God doesn't keep us at a limited. God is saying, hey, come to me and I'll give you more. I'll give you more. I'll give you more so that, not just so that you will be filled up, I'm giving you more because I know you're getting ready to release it. <laughs> I can trust you with more because I know you won't be stingy with it. Can God trust you in this season with more and know from the posture of your heart you won't hold on to it, but you'll release it? here's what God has trusted me. Here's what God has trusted me, even in this season. I'll be transparent. Even for this season, even for this church, that God is speaking, Anthony, I, I'm ready to release so much more to even celebration. But I'm, I'm testing your heart. I'm testing your heart because when God starts showing you some stuff, so, so, so somebody go with me real quick. Let me know in the chat. When God starts showing your vision and, and starts showing you more to the point, you, your five senses in life, in life you, can, you can see it, you can taste it, you can hear it. And now God will show you, he'll start giving you glimpses. And then God will say, now here, check your heart. Did your heart change? Is your heart still the same? I show you a little bit more but did the posture of your heart change or is it still the same? That's what service is all about. It keeps us humble. The word says it this way, that he exalts the ones that humble themselves. If you're looking for more, stay humble. Stay humble, stay hungry, and go out to God and serve him and his people. Serve in this season. Serve in this season. So beautiful. Let me, as we get ready to close down, let me, let me pray for you. Appreciate this. Father God, Heavenly Father, such a, such a powerful time even this morning with you. As we sit at your feet, even in this posture for our 7 a.m. folks, even for our YouTube family, that even through these spiritual disciplines, we're growing better, closer, and better in this season. That, 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 you're, that you're mending our hearts and you're molding our hearts to become in alignment with you. When we are in alignment with you, we're, we're able to be poured into in such an incredible way. Touch the minds of all of us right now. Touch our hearts right now. Begin to even send us through the fire a little bit, Lord God, so that we can so that what's not of you can actually be burnt off. We want to be so in alignment with you in this season that we're hearing from you even better, we're seeing from you even better, that even all of our spiritual senses are in alignment with you. We're so grateful what you're, what you're teaching us in this season that we're growing closer to you. We love you so much. We honor you. We do all of this because of you the graciousness of your son, Jesus. Matchless name. Amen. 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 Amen.